So I have a kind of big announcement. And then so I want to talk about it, go over it and develop kind of my elevator pitch for it overall as kind of my bottom line within this and what I want to do here. So the overall uh, arc of this is that um, applicable grounded innovations, we are going to be building a model, a, um, a um, we'll call it an LLM based model at the moment, but I'll get into that. But uh, the very specific reason and the what the model will do is it will be all built all around memory. And that's the uh, in all of these different avenues that I've been playing in, all these different projects that I've had come up, all of these different discussions that I've had with like for a few years now, it's uh, and and I like I like to play around in like characterization and things like that, right? And uh, getting like an in depth experience, role playing, and then so within those types of like realms and playgrounds, memory becomes very important within that. And then so when I uh, develop products and and I put out models and I work on them, it's always a memory issue. And then how exactly do I handle that? And I handle it in different ways, right? There's a very simple way to give models memory. You can just give them like a notepad and then essentially just have them write to the notepad. Right. And then, but is that the end goal? Like, um, how it's very limiting within that, right? You can fill up the notepad. Do you have multiple notepads? And then you have to have memory for multiple notepads. And then you have to have more logic and you increase the logic each incremental step of that, right? So then it becomes no longer just an easy task. And then you have to make all of that work together. And then is that like, there's different, like several different frameworks and approaches for memory overall. I've talked about memory on this channel a lot before too, right? In terms of uh, like getting in, if it were going towards like an actual mimicking of human memory, I think it's very important to put in a probabilistic blend in the memory uh in there somewhere overall and then but so that's and some people might disagree and some people might not want to go towards uh an agi type of architecture overall which is what this model is uh not built to do right it's built more for those tasks exactly that i, I laid out like characterization um and then around that and then so at the moment, every single model that exists via like API for characterization, they all have the same problem, which is the, the context window, right? And then so it's amazing as long as you're within the context window of that uh, model. But then once that context window falls up, fills up, it's, um, bad experience overall for the user. <laughs> like it, it's just like, a, it's kind of jarring to me and, and going through on these projects within that. And it's become, it, it's a, I think a multi-billion dollar problem at the end of the day with how big it is overall to solve it for that specific niche, right? And then that, like, that niche would be uh, a model that anyone that has uh, any sort of like characterization and needs would be, a, a, uh, the best model for them uh, in operating existence right currently right now for those that like people are doing like they're fine-tuning llama or mistral models and then they're just slapping those in and, and then and then fine-tuning them for uh like characterization or or whatever the approach is and i think that that's great right like the base model and, and that approach is great but the problem is is again that context window. So of overall, what we'll be building is the framework around that, the, the scaffolding in order to uh, have the model, have memory beyond that context window. And then so the end result of this will be that uh, per individual user, the each individual user will be vectors in a table, which will then translate over uh, to uh, graph nodes in a graph based uh, environment. Uh, and then they'll go through and the model will be able to utilize that as a uh, memory uh, environment and be able to uh, go through and um, improve with regards towards uh, long-term conversations, et cetera. That's the goal, right? Is is it to, to have this model become uh, a, a um, true uh, companion, right? That like, if you talk to it today, you talk to it tomorrow, you talk to it next week, it's going to remember all of those conversations, what was talked about within that. Uh, and then there's a lot of utility um, overall within that. There's a lot of bad things overall within that too. And, and so it's, it's, um, it's important to, uh, 
keep an eye on this uh, technology uh, as it develops, though. But I think that overall, this is the uh, most requested and, and the biggest use case uh, that I can solve for individually within the, this particular uh, market chain. <laughs> and then so just looking at like how everything breaks down, right? I've, I mean, that's been my model from the beginning. And I said this like three years ago, three plus years ago that uh, I don't like, I don't want to ever build just a wrapper. Uh, and then I think that there's no, like it's uh, there's no unique moat within AI. And then I'm going to study research uh, every single aspect of it until I can find a good moat. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that like uh, Google uh, has been my idol within that overall, right? Because I think Google recognized that same thing. And then during that time and at that time, Google was far behind everyone else. They had fallen behind when it came to the AI game at that particular moment, right? And then um, probably because they had recognized that same thing, like where's the moat? And they didn't want to put the work into it. And I, I don't know, but that would be my overall uh, thinking within that. Then they realized that they have to. So they invest heavily into it. Two years later, they're at the top of everyone else. And now, three years later, they're starting to develop like those moats. Like you can actually see it, right? Like VO3, for example, is a good moat for them overall at the moment. And you can see that they're trying to uh, hold that, that, that moat line there as long as they can, right? Because uh, to me, the next evolution of these models overall, like I don't think we're going to be like... By the end of 2025, 100%, I think it will be the case that like uh, we'll no longer be talking about just LLMs as the primary uh, models, and then it will be like uh, MLLMs, like multi-modal models, and then also and that includes vision, audio, speech, and text, and all in one model, right? And then that's. Uh, the new <laughs> LLM basically. Uh, and then like those, so that will be your, your base model. And then what I'm supplying on top of that is uh, that base model that would have all those capabilities plus having a memory system uh, within it, right? And then just kind of going through like what I've sketched out so far as to the memory system and uh, how I want to architect and build this out on the back end, just giving anyone any sort of idea. Like if you're starting, uh, you want to start off uh, with an AI-based venture, you have these ideas, you know, you've figured out uh, where you want to tackle and go, like how exactly, what's your step two from there, right? So step two is, uh, going through and well, step two is I figured out how much it's going to, to uh, cost within this. And it's going to cost, I think, to build out what we're looking at here. It's about $50,000 so, and overall uh, to get it all up and running and, and generated and everything like that. And then so within that, the step three is what's the, the actual blueprint for that. And then so here it's architecting a hybrid AI memory framework with Quadrant, Neo4j, and Langchain. And then so these are the three... Um, back-end systems that I decided to go with for this memory system. And I'm particularly interested if anyone wants to criticize like the lane chain specifically, like, or have a recommendation uh, on the lane chain side for like the, the wrapper, I'd be open to that. My uh, kind of uh, logic and my reasoning within that for, for lane chain is very specifically because it plays nicely with Quadrant and Neo4j, which are what I want to use for the embedding layer and then for the graph layer. Um, and then so within the architecture overall, uh, essentially we are building a... so. Retrieval act like RAG has become a standard technique for enhancing LLMs with external knowledge, thereby improving factual accuracy and reducing hallucinations. However, traditional RAG systems often treat all information as homogeneous collection of unstructured text chunks, indexed and retrieved based on semantic similarity alone. This approach, while effective for certain tasks, fails to capture the rich, explicit relationships and the structured facts that underpin the complex domains. A hybrid memory framework overcomes this limitation by modeling different types of knowledge in specialized purpose-built data stores. This architecture creates a more sophisticated cognitive model that separates fast associative recall from deep structured reasoning, enabling the system to handle a much broader and more complex range of queries. 
On the quadrant side, as far as the semantic and episodic memory, in this framework, quadrant serves as the semantic and episodic memory layer. It is optimized for storing and searching high dimensional vectors, making it the ideal repository for unstructured or semi-structured data that can be represented by embeddings. And then this includes like raw text com documents, conversation histories, user observations, et cetera, right? Like anything that's that's uh, raw. And then that's, um, in my instance, it's like a lot of text conversations, et cetera, right? And so I would want to, to feed those in uh, and via the Quadrant system. So Quadrant's primary strength lies in its ability to perform highly efficient vector similarity searches. It answers questions based on semantic meaning, such as what have we discussed that's similar to corporate restructuring or find me documents related to renewable energy policy. Uh, this represents the system's experiential memory, a repository of what it has seen, read, and heard accessible through associative recall. Quadrant supports dense, sparse, and hybrid retrieval method modes, allowing for a combination of semantic and keyword-based search for enhanced precision. Neo4j is that graph neural network, that graph layer. So Neo4j functions as the declarative and relational memory layer implemented as a native graph database. Its purpose, it's, it's purpose built to store and traverse structured factual knowledge in the form of a property graph, which consists of nodes, entities, relationships, and the connections between them, and properties, attributes of nodes and relationships. This makes it exceptionally well suited for representing domains where connections are important as 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 important as the data points themselves and then so neo4j excels at answering those questions right when you need to actually like query so who's the ceo of company x that acquired competitor x what's the shortest path between researcher a and technology b in the collaboration network list all employees who work in the same department as jane doe and have collaborated on a project with someone from the legal team like the a, 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 a recall information about the last dungeons and dragons game <laughs> like and, and um, or like the about this warrior system or or like whatever it is overall right the the uh, when getting into the fantasy realm there and then so the last component is just uh, lane chain and lane graph as the cognitive orchestrator uh, orchestration system just to, to piece all of that together uh, for reasoning planning routing synthesizing and iterating and then uh, the rest is just like a documentation as to like how to build out this framework overall but uh, and, and, and implement it um, and then so to me it's that's the next step right so that's the team uh the developers to do that and then so i'm working on that within the next month or two um is like kind of the timeline that we're looking at uh right now realistically to put out like a, a v1 of um this uh memory system <laughs> very, very basic v1 uh of of the memory system and then just developing agile will kind of uh, uh, develop and uh, process and develop the process out further from there and develop out this model um, and then get it. Uh, hopefully, I, I would say within um, my realistic goal is three to four months to have it like fully operational in a like very like a uh, production ready, like very like a uh, showcaseable uh, environment and uh, kind of ready to go and serve uh, to the world overall <laughs> as a uh, unique model that uh, is a has memory beyond its context is the bottom line, right? The goal is, is for this, uh, if the user, uh, I would break it up, I'm assuming into, uh, at the end into like a premium type of plans because it, and because on the back end, this gets more and more expensive, right? But I can, what this allows me to do is to infinitely expand the storage on the back end if necessary. And then, so if someone wants a model to never forget, like for years, you could have that and you could build that out. You would be paying a lot of storage on the back end for that. But if there's use cases for that, this architecture would be able to handle that. And there are more, a lot of more use cases around those types of things than I would imagine. Maybe not storing for years, but storing for uh, hours, days, uh, up to a few weeks, et cetera. Like that's, I think like there's a lot of um, missed opportunity currently in the market there. And then, so that's, our niche, that's our moat, that's where we're focusing in and honing in. And uh, so I'll see you uh, on the other side. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.